Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, like a few people at the moment, I am watching Shogun a completely normal amount, and I have had a couple of these Ronin miniatures uh, sitting around waiting for a lick of paint, so I figured, what better opportunity than now? Now, those of you who like watching me bounce back from mistakes are probably going to enjoy this one. There are a couple of funny choices, one or two honest mistakes that happened throughout the course of this video, so if you like watching me fix things, keep your eyes peeled. All of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below, same as usual, so let's get started. So once your miniature is assembled and cleaned up, it's time to go ahead and prime them. Now I've used here Wraithbone, but you could just as easily use Brain Matter Beige from the Army Painter, maybe even Skeleton Bone if you wanted a darker finish, but something with a little bit of warmth to it is really going to be key to what we're doing here, particularly when it comes to his skin. Now a really common question when it comes to painting Japanese, Chinese, you know, East Asian figures is how to get the skin tone right. And this is one where I think there's a lot of emphasis on putting yellow into the skin tone, which if you look at photographs, particularly with Shogun being on the air right now, look at some of the photos of the Japanese cast members next to the uh, English and European cast. They don't look all that different. To my eye, the main difference is that the Japanese skin tone has a slightly less red uh, component to it. It's not about making yellow, which is, I would say, a little outdated, but we do want just a fraction of a difference. I would suggest you could just as easily paint them the same as you would the uh, European cast members, and it wouldn't look all that strange on the table, but there is something here which we can use, and that is Peachy Flesh from the Army Painter. Now this one is, well, it's a peachy skin tone, it's nice and warm, uh, but it's not quite as red once it dries as you would see something like Gilliman Flesh or even Crusader Skin. So let's get them in shot here. And we're going to start with the skin because it will be the easiest to tidy up if we make a mess. And it will look pretty red going on. But in a moment or so, as this dries, you'll start to see what I mean by not going for yellow. Go for less red. You'll see how that's not quite as vibrant as Gilliman Flesh would be, and certainly not as red. It is peachy, but I think that works just fine. What I'm going to do now is the straps on his sandals, which is a sentence I don't get to, <laughs> I don't get to say something like that very often. I'm going to use bony matter for this. Now, if you want, um, you can do the ropes and what have you on his belt with this as well. Uh, but I'm going to do this now because I expect I'm going to make kind of a mess on his sandals. And if I do, I can get some wraith bone and tidy up uh, as part of the next step as well. But this, okay, maybe I'll just take the time, be careful, and I won't need to tidy up. Now what do you know? I actually managed to paint his sandals okay. Winner! Uh, what I'm going to move on to now is his belt. And he's got a, he's got a rope around some of this, uh, but I am going to paint in his belt with a slightly lighter blue than I want his yukata. Uh, you know, I could really use a hand. If you've got sources or what have you, um, I was flying through the research on this to try and get this done. And if I've made any mistakes, I would actually like to hear about them for a change of pace. Uh, what I'm using here, this is Tidal Wave, but I have actually thinned this down. This is three drops of Tidal Wave to two drops of uh, Speed Paint Medium to thin it out a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I'm making something of a mess here, but that is why I'm doing this now, so that I can go over the ropes uh, with Wraith Bone at the same time as I tidy up his skin and shirt and what have you. And now with just a little smidge of wraith bone, we're going to tidy up spots like on his chest here, around his belt, anywhere that we have splurged a little with that speed paint to start with. We can now block in again and make it ready for the next colors. Now with that little bit of cleanup done, we're going to go back to bony matter. And I'm going to paint in the rope here around his neck and around his waist as well. 
And when it comes to his clothes, we are going to use a larger brush. I've got here a medium shade brush from Citadel. Uh, this one's pretty good, it's still got its tip. Really nice size brush for what we're going to do. With some grim black, I'm going to go all over the bottom half of his clothes. And the size of the brush lets me really load it up with the speed paint. Uh, but the tip means I've still got some control over where it goes. So over all of this, you want to work relatively quickly. Grim Black always really surprises me as it dries. I, I never think it's going to look quite as good as it does. And then, like I said, it dries and it surprises me. What I've got here, I, oh, I was going to paint him blue originally, but I decided on a green. I have Gilly Dew, and I've mixed that in half and half with some Speed Paint Medium. Now I'm going to start by using my larger brush on this sleeve. Then I'm going to switch to a smaller one that I started out with and paint the other side in smaller sections. This gives me a little bit more control, because as you see, this side is quite easy. I can just smear this all over. But the other side, I want to be able to avoid his belt, his hands, and what have you, with a little bit more control. Now, because I've got it so warm in here while I'm recording, uh, it hasn't dried quite as smoothly as I would like. Not a huge problem. We're going to do a little bit to it later, but that doesn't look too bad. What I'm going to use now is just a wonderful color. I'm going to use Murder Scene for two reasons. One, it's a wonderful deep dark purple. And two, how many opportunities do you get to use a paint called Murder Scene? So I'm going to paint in the uh, grips on his swords with this. We're starting to get somewhere. I'm going to flip him around and we're going to paint in his hat. And for this here, I have Skeleton Horde. Now this is a contrast color. I could use, I think it's Pallid Bone is the army painter's closest equivalent, but I don't have that. So I'm going to use Skeleton Horde. Just be nice and quick, straight over the hat, and it will dry to a lovely straw color. Now there are a couple of things that I want to be a very solid black. And for this, I'm going to use Black Legion. Again, another one, this is a contrast color. Um, there's nothing saying it actually has to be contrast either. You could very easily just use a black acrylic here. Uh, but since I had it open, away we go. You see it covers very, very solid. And uh, let's get up under there as well. I'm also going to paint in his hair and mustache with this. You'll see with his hair painted in and his face kind of framed by the miniature itself, he suddenly doesn't look quite so rich and red. And I think peachy skin is the best choice here. I'm now going to paint in the metallic details. It's not very many of these, but it is pretty prominent. So I'm using plate mail metal for this. And I could probably start with a larger brush for the blade itself. But oh well. Over this and the hand grips. Now while that dries, I'm going to carefully get a little bit of strong tone here. Um, I haven't thinned this down any, because what I'm going to do is pop it straight onto the white bits so that we haven't done anything yet, and uh, make this a little bit more interesting. So this thing around his forearm and his hand wraps as well. And then the same thing again with some dark tone over the metallic details. Now what I've got is one that I don't use very often, but I'm always glad to have it when I do. This is Military Shader, which is a deep, sort of olivey green color. And I have thinned this down with two parts of Speed Paint Medium to one part of the green. So you'll see it's not very strong at all. Uh, but what I want is just to dull down that green a tiny fraction while improving some of the shading and uh, I think this is going to do quite well. So over all of the green goes my Military Shader Mix. Now once that has dried, we're going to apply a couple of highlights to the green. I have here a Necrotic Flesh, and I've thinned this down with just a little bit of water. You'll see that it isn't the strongest color going on. And we don't really want it to massively overpower where we're applying it. We just want a little bit of definition to some of the more pronounced creases in the uh, clothing he's wearing. So take your time, 
as much or as little of this as you like. Now that hasn't settled in quite the way I had in mind. Um, maybe something like Ogren Camo from Citadel might have been a better choice, something a little bit more vibrant, but I have a cunning plan. What I've got here is one drop of Maze Yellow, it's a speed paint, to nine drops of speed paint medium. I've made a glaze out of this. I'm going to go ahead and apply this over all of the green. And with a bit of luck, that should tie together. Oh, yeah, I think that's working. Uh, the green and our highlights. And that'll look quite nice once that dries. Um, I forget when it was that I was first introduced to using yellow glazes over green. I think it was painting orcs, but man, oh man, does it ever work well. Now, while that dries, I have got here Storm Vermin Fur. Now, this is not a, a pure grey. This has really got a little bit of brown to it, uh, which I quite like using for hair. So thin it down until you've got a nice fluid amount. Don't have very much on your brush. Just little lines of this to add a bit of shape and volume to that black hair again. Now, the last of the highlights I'm going to apply, this is a little bit of Vallejo Basic Skin Tone. Now, this is super, super bright. It doesn't necessarily look it when it comes out of the pot, but uh, I quite like it for finishing off real pale skin like this. So once I'm done, uh, what I'm going to do is to matte varnish the whole miniature. Uh, I'm going to use Instars Varnish Plus for that, like I normally would. However, uh, I'm going to lacquer, essentially, his, um, his scabbards and his swords with a little bit of Storm Shield. From Citadel because that's slightly brighter and smoother and that being slightly glossy it's not a, a true matte I think will uh, help sell the look a little so let's get a look at this fella once he is all finished and so there at last our Ronin is complete and like I said at the beginning he didn't really turn out quite like I had in mind there were one or two things where I sort of had to adapt on the fly and a couple of bits which, man, I wish I had chosen a different color. But that is, I mean, that's just the way things go. Sometimes when you aren't following a specific, you know, guide or a uniform color, you just gotta see what lands. And in the end, I think the green is pretty cool, but I do wish maybe a, even a beige or a mid-tone brown for a slightly more simple peasant look might have suited him better. But, eh, I don't know. He's cool, and with a few of his mates in the cabinet, he'll look even better. So I'm not unhappy about how it turned out. So thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for your support, folks. You are the ones that keep this channel ticking. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.